Fleet TV Plus. This is morning news on Fleet TV Plus. He had headlines. Senate confirms CBN Governor nominee Kadoso. Man advises Tinubu to use cassava for NERA commodification. NLC TUC declare indefinite strike from October 3. Government back this is size of collapsed bridge in Enugu. Government must intervene. Market forces can't stabilize NERA, says Oshomale. I have no end on the bad step. Normally reviews. Now the news. The Senate has confirmed the appointment of Yemi Kadoso as the Central Bank of Nigeria's CBN Governor and four others as Deputy Governors of the Apex Bank. They were confirmed on Tuesday following a screening by the upper legislative body. The Deputy Governors who were confirmed are Emim Nana Usuro, Mohamed Sani, Abdullahi Datijo, Philip Ekiazo and Bala Belo. Before their confirmation, the nominees had answered questions on matters related to economic and other policies. The senior senator, the senior senator, Oju Sakalo, you can see the anger you are expressing. You are expressing the anger on behalf of your colleagues and on behalf of the Nigerian people. And uh, it's uh, the belief of many Nigerians that if the immediate past management did not resign, they would have started importing toilet paper. Because they had gone into so many things and they have no ways of checking even cross-checking whether their policies were working. Angle borrowers program debt, cement manufacturing debt, rise, uh, rise, uh, rise for all the, uh, debt, NISAR program, no money going to Nigerians, debt, fertilizer importation, and everything, all sorts of things. So at the end, they were sitting down there while the Naira was falling and falling and falling and falling and no solution. So we just want you to rush. And what, what is the name of that uh, meeting you normally have to give back? Is it the MP? Yeah, we want you to go and hold MPC, even on either Madrid, so that you can help Nigeria. That's the simple truth. That's why we are making this sacrifice. That's why we are making this sacrifice. It's a very serious situation. If we cannot stem the tide of the slide of the Naira and stop the CBN, from engaging in a, a manufacturing of textile, clothes, and then um, um, farm, and um, farm products, and claiming to import rice, and claiming to import the petroleum products. It, 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 CBN was virtually, in fact, I went to two commissions by CBN. I think they commissioned uh, secondary school hostels, then they commissioned university hostel in University of Nigeria. I went to a few of them, and I, I saw, and they were also purchasing desks and chairs. They even went into book supply to some universities. There is nothing CBN has not done. But the only thing they have not been able to do is being a banker of bankers and being a banker for Nigeria and being able to stabilize the fiscal and monetary policies in this country. That's why you are coming. You are coming at a difficult time when the, the CBN, the, what, the image of the CBN has become an albatross. It has become something that worries all Nigerians. So I don't want us to go too far so that Businessmen will not lose confidence in uh, CBN. During the screening, Cardoso promised to embrace compliance, assuring that under his leadership, the Apex Bank would remain apolitical. Cardoso's confirmation comes weeks after President Bola Tinobu nominated him as the acting CBN governor and four others as deputies. In other news, an interesting video has surfaced online where a courageous man accosted Nigeria's President Bola Ahmed Tinobu. The unidentified Nigerian man boldly advised Tinubu to use cassava for communication of Naira. Say, my president, commodification of the Naira, commodification of the Naira. This is how your day you have for Congo My president, your excellency, commodification of the Naira, commodification of the Naira, monetary policy, commodification of the Naira, cassava, use cassava, 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 commodification of the Naira for monetary policy. Nigeria's Naira hit a record low on the black market on Tuesday of 1,000 Naira to the dollar, traders said, with unmet foreign currency demand on the official market and speculation adding to downward pressure. Africa's largest economy and top oil producer has struggled to get to grips with huge dollar strategies and a myriad of exchange rates that have stemmed much-needed investment in the country.
Meanwhile, the leaders of the Nigeria Labour Congress, NLC, and the Trade Union Congress of Nigeria, TUC, will commence an indefinite strike on Tuesday, October 3rd. This followed a joint brief briefing held by both leadership of the union in Abuja, the nation's capital, on Tuesday. The unions also asked their state chapters to mobilize for protests across the country. It was gathered that the leaders of the two labor centers have resolved their differences that made only NLC embark on a two-day warning strike without the participation of TUC. Resolved as follows. One, two, in the spirit of the Independence Day celebration, and to demonstrate our resolve for a truly independent Nigeria, to take our destinies in our own hands and rescue our nation. Two, to embark on an indefinite and total shutdown of the nation beginning on zero hours, Tuesday, the third day of October, 2023. Three, to direct all workers in Nigeria to withdraw their services from their respective workplaces, commencing from the 3rd of October, 2023. Four, to direct all affiliates and state councils to immediately, to immediately start mobilizing accordingly for action to organize street protests and rally until government responds positively to our demands. Five, to enjoin all patriotic Nigerians to join hands across the nation to assist this government, put the people back at the center of its policies and programs. Sign. In a negotiated state, the governor Peter Oba has called for a new road maintenance model to guarantee a better condition and legitimacy of Nigerian roads, regretting that the current model had failed woefully. According to a media aide to Umba, Dr. Weme, the governor, made the call when he visited the site of the collapsed bridge between the new artisan flyover and the NNPC mega station along the Enugu Port Court Expressway. Fielding questions from newsmen after the force and inspection of the scene of the disaster, Umba would thank God that no life was lost despite the magnitude of the incident, urged the federal government to consider a concession of all the federal roads in its state to the state government for proper maintenance in conjunction with the private sector. On narrow matters, Senator Adams Oshuamale has asked the federal government to intervene to stabilize the NERA, the country's currency, saying market forces cannot do such. As of Tuesday, September 26, Nigeria's currency exchanged for 1,000 Naira for a dollar in the parallel market and the pound going for around 1,200 Naira just months after the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, flouted the Naira. Oshuamale, while speaking, on the Senate floor during the screen of the CBN governor nominee Yemi Kadoso and four other deputies called on the government to intervene to save the country's currency. Dr. Ojo Sokalo, Dr. Ojo Sokalo, you, you, I think your question has covered almost everybody. But let's hear from uh, His Excellency Adam Zoshumole. He may have a perspective that will also add value. I will, I will. President and my distinguished colleagues, thank you for this privilege to meet those who manage our central bank. I want to differ very radically from what seems to be the general view. My view is I am suspicious of people whose main background come from commercial banking. Because central banking is about policy. It's not about marketing. It's not about seeking profit. It's about getting monetary policies right with clear focus on specific microeconomic objectives. Whether it is job creation, stabilizing a, a, a price regime, exchange rate regime, inflation regime, all of that. When Listening to the CVs, people who are managed banks that have gone into liquidation, that cannot be used as positive in their favor. The truth has to be told. I am not suggesting that any one of them is responsible. I am saying a doctor who parades the number of people who died under his care cannot forward that to me as a CV for me to appoint him as a soldier general. 
I just need them to take note of that. That what we do in our small places of work, whether they, succeed, they survive or fail, goes to our credit or discredit. So they should take note. However, sir, I think at the heart of our problem, and I need their views on this, is that the immediate past management of the bank emphasized their autonomy. But in the real world of macroeconomic management, every agency's activity rub off on another agency. There can be no autonomy from monetary authority such that they do not interface with the fiscal authority. And even these two, in my view, if they do not relate with the Ministry of Trade and Commerce, because the challenge we deal with now is at least to everybody here, everybody seems to have submit, submitted completely to the so-called market forces and rely on the, the invisible hands of uh, Adam Smith to regulate and determine the value of the Naira. It is now clear, after Babagida started this devaluation, that the Naira, the market forces can never stabilize the Naira. The state must intervene. Interest rate cannot be at 20%, 25%, and you are expecting the manufacturing sector to grow that require long-term investment, or uh, investment that require long-term gestation period, borrowing at 20%, even if you are a drug dealer, you will find that those dealing with drug in, uh, in some other part of Latin America will be more competitive. So I think that there is need for a complete thinking outside the box. When the West celebrates our free market, no control, and so on, I'm always suspicious. When they come for us, that we are doing the right thing, the, the state is withdrawing, less regulations at a time when we can see that even at the time of world trade, nation states are negotiating with other nation states to have specific trade relationships. So I feel we need this new team. We need this new team to completely think outside the box, and I will expect on this occasion, Mr. President, but all the things that many of our colleagues have spoken to, including my, my dear brother, uh, Oji Kalu, if we allow Nigerians to import everything without restriction, and you have limited Naira dollars available, the Naira will continue to suffer devaluation. Our best time that you refer to, Mr. President, when you reminded us of a time where one Naira was 1.5 US dollars. I was a very proud worker in the Texas factory. In those days, government, under the uh, a policy of backward integration, prohibit manufacturers from importing certain items. Even some tensile fabrics were prohibited because the game of competition presupposes equality and uh, a level playing field. You cannot ask a, a, a featherweight champion to go and engage a heavyweight champion in the name of competition. Nigeria needs specific tools to protect industries at home and not pretend that a man with one leg can compete in a race with a man with two legs. We need a complete radical shift. We don't need the West to clap for us. We need Nigeria to clap for us. So I want these bankers and also, I've heard of you very much. When I was a trader, you know, we trouble each other somehow when you were in Lagos. And even now, we trouble you so that this president succeed. We need to keep interrogating our assumptions and ensure that we are not copy copy Washington, all this international finance capital. It is their interest. There is no such thing as common interest. So, Mr. President, I thank you for allowing me to talk this much because. If this president is going to deliver on the renewed hope, it must devise new tools away from invisible market to visible hands that can be held responsible and accountable for our collective future. Thank you, sir. Finally, on the news, Nigerian singer Naramali has said that he has no hand, directly or indirectly, in the death of his former signee in the Riolua Aloba, a.k.a. Mobad. In a fresh statement shared on his Instagram page, 
On Tuesday evening, Miramali said he has not only been shocked by the passing of Mubad but also by the lies and threats issued against him. He said himself and Mubad had their share of disagreements while working together but that he never degenerated into wishing each other death. He said he has been out of the country since October 31 but is making plans to return following an invitation by the police who are currently investigating the death of late Mubad. He said he is fully cooperating with the police team and has no reason to be a fugitive since he has no end in the death of Mubad. Daramali said in due time the circumstances surrounding Mubad's death will be unveiled and the world will know the truth. He added that Mubad left his record label in September 2022 and that his departure was well accepted. He dismissed claims that his label tried to stop Mubad from working after he left. He also stated that he is not a drug lord and that claims that his record label is a drug cartel are untrue. He added that he has never fought Mubad nor instructed anyone to bully or attack Mubad. Thanks for joining our news broadcast. Subscribe on our channel for latest updates. Opa Emelubu, reporting for Sleep TV Plus.